In 1942, the USA accepted a new tank into service. The name of the tank was M4 Sherman. Its reliability and performance earned the respect of hundreds of tanker crews all around the world, from Western Europe to the far corners of the USSR. But the team that created the Sherman knew all too well that no glory lasts forever. After all, the Sherman was based on the M2 medium tank that was developed in the 1930s, and the new tank basically squeezed every single bit of potential out of this old design. In other words, the clock was ticking. The US needed a more advanced follow-up tank. Throughout 1942, the team tested different ideas. Gladion M. Barnes pushed for a design with an engine moved to the back and the turret moved to the front, so that the tank could have a lower profile and receive better armor. Several options were considered when it came to transmission and the tank's main armament, and the vehicle was to feature the 500 horsepower Ford GAN V8 engine. By the end of 1942, the team assembled several prototypes, one of which the T-20 is available in War Thunder. It was equipped with a 76mm M1 cannon with a vertical stabilizer and was fitted with 63.5mm frontal armor. All of that with a weight of less than 30 tons. Yep, it was lighter than a production Sherman. All things considered, it was a pretty impressive vehicle for its time, but, just as many other prototypes, it was ultimately doomed by the inevitable advance of new technologies. It took the team behind the project a whole year to find a perfect combination of a main gun and a transmission, and while they were at it, several prototypes became practically outdated due to the low caliber of their guns. Another thing was that by 1943, the army came to the conclusion that the development of a completely new vehicle just wasn't worth it. You have to spend time and resources to make it work in the first place and to iron out the kinks after that. Why suffer if you could just make more Shermans which were reliable and battle-tested? Unfortunately, the arrival of German Panthers put an end to all hopes that the US could make do with just Shermans. And so, the development continued. Obviously, the tank had to receive a gun that would allow it to fight German cats, like the 90mm gun M2, an American heavy anti-aircraft gun, or more precisely, its M3 anti-tank variant. It was already 1944 at that point, but the team behind the project had several new prototypes at the ready, the T-25 and T-26 lines of tanks. The former basically picked up the flag where one of the previous iterations, the T-23, which was abandoned due to concerns over its reliability, had previously left it. The vehicle had a new gearbox a horizontal volute suspension system and an electric transmission. But all of that was in vain, because in the end, the military decided to go with the T-26, which was a more reliable variant with a torsion bar suspension system and better armor. It's worth noting that all those modifications and improvements made the tank significantly heavier, pushing it into the heavy tank category even though it performed much more like a medium tank. The vehicle hit the assembly lines in 1944, and in 1945 made it to the battlefield, where it proved to be a good weapon against German Tigers and Panthers. One duel between a T-26 and a Panther was even caught on film. The American crew managed to hit the side of the enemy tank on a street next to a cathedral. All in all, the tank did really well. Tankers loved that it had more armor and more firepower than the Sherman, but the design had a few shortcomings as well. There were some problems with the transmission. Its armor didn't match its mobility, and at best, 
the future seemed dubious for its 90mm M3 cannon. In fact, there were a few immediate attempts to upgun the tank. One prototype was fitted with the T-99 rocket launcher system. Another, known as the Super Pershing, was given a new long-barreled gun, as well as additional armor, some of it cut from an enemy panther, no less. The third variant was armed with a 90mm T-54 cannon. Furthermore, American engineers designed another variant with better armor, the T-26E-5. It went through trials and, in theory, could make it to actual production, but by that point the war was over, and the military decided to abandon this particular project. The main tank, though, was accepted into service in March of 1945, standardized as M26 Pershing. It was named after General of the Army's John J. Pershing, a legendary military commander of the World War I era. Despite the success of the new tank in the field, the production of the Pershing stopped after just one year. Nevertheless, the experience accrued during the development of this tank was later used to create several generations of new vehicles. It was the M26 that opened the way to the tanks of the Patton series, which remain in service today, as well as to the T29, the T30 and the T34 heavy tanks. As for the Pershing itself, it proved its worth fighting Soviet T-34-85 tanks during the Korean War. Batches of Pershings were also delivered to different allies of the US, France, Belgium and Italy used them until the mid-1950s. The M26 became an important milestone for the American tank industry basically giving American engineers a platform that they could use to make significantly more advanced tanks in the future. But what do you think of the Pershing tank? Please, come on, tell us in the comments below. <laughs>